I won't be satisfied Till I walk down the streets of gold Those mansions bright The pearly gates will soon swing open wide Until I hold that nail-scarred hand I won't be satisfied Well, I won't be satisfied Till I step inside those gates For I know inside those walls Great joy for me awaits If I can but see my Savior there It'll make my joy complete Then I'll be satisfied to sit And worship at His feet Well, I won't be satisfied Till His beauty I behold I won't be satisfied Until I walk the streets of gold Those mansions bright Big pearly gates are gonna soon swing open wide Until I grasp that nail-scarred hand I won't be satisfied to Nero's chop block, Paul was led to face his death alone. Well, I fought a good fight, I've kept the faith, my race is nearly run. For you, I've suffered a few things, to please Jesus I have tried. But until I step inside those gates, I won't be satisfied. I won't be satisfied to this beauty I behold. I won't be satisfied till I run those streets of gold. Those mansions bright, the big pearly gates are going to soon swing open wide. Until I'm with him on that day, I won't be satisfied. Until I'm with him on that day, I won't be satisfied. Amen. And then one of these days, huh, I wonder if that's the right chord. You guys got the right chord? <laughs> nah, I think we better go to something else. Well, some glad morning when this life is o'er, I fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I fly away. Well, I fly away, oh glory. I fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by. I fly away Oh, just a few more Where it is and then I fly away I'm going to a home Where joy will never end I fly away Well, I fly away Hallelujah, by and by, I fly away. I said just a few more weary days and then I fly away. I'm going to a home where joy will never end. Oh, I'm going to fly away. Well, I'll fly away, fly away, oh glory, I When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I fly away. Oh, when the shadows of this life have grown, I'm going to fly away. I'm going to a land where joy will never end. I'm going to fly away. Help me sing it. Well, I fly away, oh, glory. I fly away when 
I die. Hallelujah, by and by, I'm going to fly away. Well, I'm going to fly away. I'm going to fly away. Oh, I'm going to fly away. I'm going to fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I fly away. Amen. Remain standing this morning. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. We get a couple of ushers up front. We'll receive our morning tithe, the morning offering. Brother Dwayne. Well, I got Jesus on the main line. I hope you do too. Well, I got Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. I got Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. <laughs> oh, call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. I got Jesus on the main line now. Well, I got Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. I got Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. I got Jesus on the main line now. Well, if you need the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. If you need the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. If you need the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Help me sing. I got Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. I got Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Why don't you call him up? Call him up. Tell him what you want. Why don't you call him up? Call him up. Tell him what you want. I said, call him up, call him up. Tell him what you want. I got Jesus on the main line now. Well, if you want the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. If you want the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. If you want the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. I got Jesus on the main line now. Well, Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. I got Jesus on the main line now. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what you're going through this morning. does not matter what your situation is this morning. If you've come this morning and arm yourself with this mind that you're going to have church, if you even if you got to have it by yourself, you want to say, you're going to have church, even if you've got to have it all by yourself. God's got blessing this morning. God's got healing this morning. God's got something with your name on it. Do you believe it this morning? Somebody lift their hands towards him this morning and wave them toward him this morning. I believe God is going to do something great in this house this morning. I don't know about you, but I come to serve God this morning. I come to praise him. I come to worship him. I come to preach to some folks. It may be foolishness, but to me, it is my life. It's my existence. Amen. This is how I make it from week to week. I, this is how I get my strength to keep on going. I don't know how folks who lay out of church for two, three months at a time make it through. It's a daily walk. You take up your cross daily the Bible says amen. If you love them, raise your hands and praise the king this morning. Hallelujah. I feel his presence. I've come to have church this morning. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord another big hand to praise. As we move into our prayer requests, continue to remember those that are sick and those that cannot be here with us this morning. Um, they move Sister Mitzel. Uh, to the uh, rehab place, and I hear that she's doing all right. Is that right, Sister Sylvia? Doing wonderful. Give the Lord a hand for that. 
Um, continue to remember Sister Wassum. Talked to her yesterday, I believe it was. Uh, she said, besides feeling weak, she's doing great. So uh, I, I, I told her, I said, one day at a time. What you do, you take one day at a time, and you build off of that day. So uh, remember her in prayer also. Um, remember Sister Opal's uh, husband, Bobby. Uh, we went up to see him. Uh, I think it was Friday. I went to the wrong hospital. Went to the second floor in Havity Grace, and I'm walking around. There ain't nobody in there. I thought, man, somebody done came up here full of faith and cleared this place out. <laughs> I mean, there wasn't nobody. There was dark, dark rooms and everything. So I texted Lisa. I said, I said, where are you guys at? She said, we're in Bel Air. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> well, that explains it. <laughs> but uh, we went up there and um, uh, prayed with them and, and, and talked to them. And first thing out of his mouth was this. You know, some folks just have raw faith. And that's the truth. Some folks just have raw faith. And he told the nurse, he, he, we sat there for a couple of minutes, and she'd done what she was doing. Then he just spoke up. He said, this man's going to pray for me, and I'm going to get better, and I'm going to get out of here. That's right. Give the Lord a hand of praise. That's right. Amen. So remember him and the family in prayer also this morning. So by uplifted hand, who has something they want to bring before the Lord in prayer this morning? Yeah, that's right. She's right. Remember all of them in prayer. Sure. Hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank God for all of his goodness and, and all of his blessings. And uh, remember them, them this morning, uh, who she requested prayer for. I heard yesterday, uh, the boy I went to school with, his wife, I think she was only 38, uh, passed away. Knew, knew him well. Uh, knew him very well. And it goes without saying, listen, life is short. You don't know when your last day is. One of these days we'll wake up and that will be our last day. Listen, for us who, who know God, it's a great, it's a glorious thing. I'll just close my eyes and I'll cross on over to the other side. <laughs> and I don't have to cross Jordan alone. That old song, when the darkness I see He'll be waiting for me. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. <laughs> but you know what? If you don't know the Lord here this morning, your time is running short. Let me just say that. Your time is running out. One of these days will be your last time, your last chance. Life is short. You're not promised tomorrow. Go ask that friend of mine if he would have thought that day he woke up that he would have lost his wife for 20-some years. Appreciate today while it is today. Appreciate those in your lives that are still, listen, if, if your husband and wives and children, if they're still here and around you, you ought to thank God. Not everybody is that fortunate right now. Thank God every day that you have those loved ones around you in your life and treat them like it's the last day because one of these days, it is going to be. But you know what? I can't wait. That old song, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing it's going to be. Glory to God, when we all see Jesus, I'm going to sing. I'm going to shout the victory, but you know, I'm not going to wait till I get to heaven. I've got a reason to shout now. I've got a reason to sing now. Hallelujah. Because my name, I said my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And nobody can take my name out of it. Hallelujah. How many of your names are written there? 
If they're written there, throw your hands up and say, God, I thank you that my name is written, hallelujah, not in a pen, not in a pencil, but by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My Lord, don't it feel nice in God's house this morning? Thank you, Lord. Anybody else? Just about. Amen. Remember them. That, that's a tough thing, tough situation that they're all going through, so keep them in prayer. Go ahead. <laughs> and she texted me one day last week and I could I could just feel her excitement coming through the phone that brother Mike God just healed me listen it doesn't have to be in church the Lord the, the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof I've had him to touch me on job sites I've had to, him to touch me in grocery stores it doesn't matter where you're at. God is with you. If you can believe it, God can do it. Amen? They were talking in Sunday school this morning. Sister Powell mentioned about having the faith of God. And you know what? Father Abraham, the father of all those that believe, somebody who, like we talked earlier, just, just raw in faith, dared believe God out in a wilderness, out in a desert place. But he went looking for a city that had foundations out in the midst of a desert. And the Bible says Abraham is the father of all them that believe. That kind of faith. You want to talk about faith, you read about Abraham. And if he's the father of all them that believe, then guess what? Somewhere... That same seed of faith is down inside of you. Come on now, I'm preaching to you. Somewhere it's down inside of you. You just got to unlock it and let it out. And when you finally realize that it's there and that you can have that kind of faith, you will absolutely see things turn around in your life. Not only in your life, on your workplace, your houses, your jobs in church, and don't we need a turnaround in the church world today? Listen, I don't know if everybody knows this or not, but Sister Judy, Jesus is coming. Jesus is on his way. Just any minute now. Soon and very soon, I'm going to see the king. Soon and very soon, I'm going to see the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Lord, I can't wait, but you got to be ready. You got to be watching. You got to be waiting. Where are all the, those that make fun and laugh and mock and scorn? When we disappear one of these days, who are they going to have to make fun of then? Who are they going to have to mock then? Hold on to your faith, guard your faith. Live every day with God like it's the last. Amen. Anybody else before we pray this morning? Sister Judy. <laughs> I like that last part. Nobody else in this church. Amen. Remember him this morning? One second. Go ahead. Amen.
Amen. Depression's a horrible thing, and uh, a lot of church folks are being afflicted by it uh, now. But you know what? There is a remedy. There is a remedy. Do you believe that? I said there's a remedy, and it's in the blood of Jesus. <laughs> I said it's in the blood of Jesus. Uh, remember my wife this morning. I don't normally ask prayer, but uh, she fell a couple weeks ago, and uh, she's had a couple of operations on her back, and she's got some hardware in there, some some pins and rods and stuff, and uh, I'm pretty sure it's shifted on her. So she's got to go back and see the surgeon again. But she's uh, she's been in some severe pain, and I didn't even think she was going to make it over here this morning, but she did. So uh, keep her in prayer this morning that uh, everything will go well when we go back to to see him in a couple of weeks. Anybody else? Let's check them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Right. Amen. Remember them this morning when you pray. Anybody else? Amen. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. And we'll stand and believe with you on that too. Amen. Somebody else had their hand up. Who was it? Nobody? All right. If you can, come gather around the altar. If not, bow your head at your seats. Remember these things this morning.
Thank you, Lord. If you have your Bibles and you want to follow along this morning, I'm going to be reading in two different spots out of the book of Matthew. I want to start first in chapter 15. And I'm going to read slow. As we live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, I don't like rushing and trying to get through it. We're going to start in verse 10 and 11, then we're going to skip down to 17. Starting in chapter 15, verse 10. This is Jesus talking here, and it says, And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, But that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Now down to 17. says, Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drop. But those things which proceedeth out of the mouth, look at this, come forth from the heart. And they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murderers, adulteries, fornications, thefts. And I could spend an absolute month on verse 19. False witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. Remember that. But to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. Now, let's turn, same book of Matthew, let's turn to chapter 23, verse 24, and this is Jesus still talking. 23, chapter 23 and verse 24 says, Ye blind guides which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Hmm. Strong words there. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisees, cleanse first. Look what he said. Cleanse first that which is within. The cup and platter that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye are like unto witted sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Can we say amen to God's word this morning? You know, at the last couple of days, every time I started reading and studying or praying, the words would come to my spirit, and and these are the words, guard your heart. Guard your heart. Not only me, but each and every one who is watching live and each and every one that is inside of this church this morning. What God is saying to one, he's saying to all, guard your hearts. Very important. Can't stress it enough because we read in Matthew 15 what comes out of the heart. Some bad, bad things comes out of the heart. That's where it all originates. And you can tell a lot of times in the first few minutes when talking to somebody what is really in their heart. You can tell if they're going through something. 
You can tell if they're down. You can tell if they're full of joy. You can tell if something's bothering them. You can pretty much tell if they know God or not because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And you don't have to go blab anything around. Folks will tell on themselves what is inside because whatever you got in here is going to come out through here. If you love them, raise your hands and praise them this morning. And a lot of times, I'll get this. Listen, when you get saved, like it or not, there is a target on us. Not only from the devil, but from other folks. And it never ceases to amaze me about how much folks are offended by what we do here in church. If me lifting my hands offends you, if me letting the Holy Ghost have his way offends you, if somebody shaking under the power of God offends you, or if you find it comical or funny, if me speaking in tongues offends you, I am not sorry. I will not bend, I will not bow, I will not change to fit in with a world that shakes their fist in the face of God. I'm just not going to do it. He's been too good to me. I know what he brought me from. I know where I was headed. And it was a place of pure and eternal torment. But I know where I'm going now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, I know what my destination is now. I know what my future is. As long as I hold onto that unchanging nail-scarred hand, one of these days, he's going to lead me over into a place. Hallelujah. A place that I've dreamed about at night. A place where I've, I've absolutely at times caught myself during the middle of the day just staring up at the sky, looking at the clouds and thinking, is that the cloud? Is that the one that he's going to step out on? Hallelujah. Lord, is this going to be the day to where you come and you catch us away out of this low ground of sorrow? I don't know, but you know what? If it does not happen today, I'll get up in the morning and I'll be watching for it to happen again. If you love him, raise your hands and praise the king. And you've got a target. Every one of us have a target. And you don't know how many times I've heard, oh, you're supposed to be a Christian. You're supposed to be a preacher. No, I'm not supposed to. I am. When God saves somebody, he does not dehumanize them. We are still subject to natural fleshly things. Only I've got something and I've got a power that keeps me from going back into where I just came from. But, but if I do happen to slip up and make a mistake, I have something called grace. I have something, and a man wrote a song about it, how amazing that it was. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Hallelujah. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. And Jesus was no different. The scribes and the Pharisees of his day were constantly trying to catch him in something, trying to entangle him with his words. 
and the scriptures that we read first, where Jesus started explaining that it's not what you put in that defiles, and people will take that and run with it and try to twist it and make it fit their own lifestyle to ease their conscience. The scribes and Pharisees saw the disciples eating one day and they didn't wash their hands. And they wanted to make a big deal out of something. No wonder Jesus said you strain at gnats but swallow camels. You're paying attention to something little that don't amount to anything. When you got something large in your life that you need to get rid of before you die and it takes you to hell. And Jesus tried to explain through words and and through parables. And they tried to find fault with disciples eating with unwashed hands. Think about that for a second. You're trying to stop the very Son of God from doing what he came to do. That's all right but you're worried about somebody not washing their hands before they eat because it transgresses a tradition of the elders? I'm not worried about a tradition. I'm worried about what the Word of God says, what it instructs me to do, how it instructs me to do it. We need to quit worrying and paying attention to every other thing that doesn't matter or going to amount to a hill of beans, they say, but let's worry about what God says. Let's worry about our walk with God. Let's worry if we're in tune with the Spirit. I don't know about you, but I want to walk in His Spirit Each and every day say, Brother Micah, how in the world can you do that? Jesus said, my word that I speak unto you is spirit. If you walk in his word, you will walk in the spirit. Oh, my Lord, I wish you could hear what I'm trying to preach to you this morning. Take up your word. Oh, my God, have a daily fellowship with him. Ingest the word every day because it is spirit. And when you walk in the word... You'll walk in the Spirit and will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you love Him, raise your hands and praise the King. So Jesus goes on and He tries to explain the importance of what's inside that matters. Look, I would rather, and you know what? Whether we like it or not, these bodies are under a sin curse. If you don't believe it, a year from now you'll be a year older. You'll feel a year older. We'll look a year older. There's absolutely nothing that we can do about it. But you know what? I'd rather have the outside not looking exactly the best, maybe not feeling exactly the best, but having the inside ready. I'd rather have the outside in a horrible mess, but the inside ready to go than to have, oh, hallelujah, than to have the best looks possible, but the inside being full of dead man's bones, that's not going to get you into heaven, but where it's going to get you to is a place called hell where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Let's be concerned about what's on the inside. Let me ask you this morning, what's going on inside of your heart? Because out of the heart proceeds fornications, adulteries, murders, hates, anything that is bad that is in this world today. It comes out of the heart. But let me let you in on some good news this morning. There is a man named Jesus who came to this low ground of sorrow one day. There was a heart condition with people all over the world. Oh, hallelujah. And he had a remedy for it. And it's God's great plan of salvation. And when Jesus died, 
on the cross and said, Father, it is finished. Into your hands I commit my spirit. And he died and descended into the lower parts of the earth. And there he stayed for three days and preached to the once captive. But when he rose again three days later, he took captivity captive. Those Old Testament saints who were held against their will, he said, come on, boys. Liberation day is at here. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you up out of here. Let's go back to the Father. Hallelujah. My God, I don't know how you can just sit there. I've been resurrected. I said, I've been resurrected. Oh, he said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. For a man were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth on me shall never die. My Lord, I wish you could feel what I feel. I feel resurrection power inside of this church. I said, I feel the Holy Ghost walking up and down the aisles of this church. You love them, raise your hand and praise them. This is what I'm talking about. Some churches are full of dead man's bone. Ain't no life in them. Ain't anything stirring or moving in them. It's all about the inside. And the devil will use things. He'll use situations. He'll use people. Amen, Brother Mike. He'll use people. Amen, Brother Mike. You see, if he can pound on the outward enough, if he can beat on the outward enough, and if you don't stay steadfast in God and in his word, the beating on the outside, if you let down your guard. You see, he's trying to break your shell. Satan is trying to break your shell. And he's trying to beat on everybody. I don't know anybody in here who isn't dealing with something. I don't know anybody in here who's not dealing with a heartache or lost loved ones, or sickness, or facing some kind of a battle. You know what? As hard as Satan has beat on some of us, as much as he has drug us through, as much condemnation that he has brought into people's lives, making them feel like they're at the very gates of hell themselves. But you know what? The gates of hell shall not prevail against the child of God. Let me say that again, devil. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the child of God. Hallelujah. Because Jesus took power over death he took power over hell and he took power over the grave. I said he took power over the grave. If I die and go by way of the grave, my brother, sister, partner, I don't think I'm going to be there too long because soon and very soon the trump of God's going to sound and I'm going to come up out of the grave. It's not possible that death can hold you. I've got a power down inside of me. I said I've got a power it not only brought me out of sin, but one of these days, it's going to carry me to my eternal home. And he's beat on some of you in here. He's tried to turn your hearts. You may still have some battle left, but guess what this morning? You are still standing. I said, you're still standing. I said, you're still here. We might, may not feel the best. We may not look the best. But devil, I'm still standing. And I'm going to stand and see the salvation of the Lord. I'm still here. You blow. You do what you want to do. Try to take me down. 
I've got news. I'm not looking for the undertaker. I said I'm looking for the upper taker. You can do what you want, but I've got a hand of protection upon me, and it's the nail-scarred hand of the leper-cleansing man, of the sea-walking man from Galilee. Say, my Lord, what got me you this morning? I'll tell you what got in me. We need some God-possessed peoples, what we need. I'm excited about what God's doing. I'm excited about what he's doing in my life. I'm excited about where he brought me from. I'm not out in the hell holes of the world sucking down that slop anymore, but I'm drinking from a new fountain. I'm drinking from the new wine. Hallelujah. I said I've got something ready for me on one of these days. When we cross over, I'm going to sit down at the marriage supper of the Lamb. My God, I don't know how you can sit there and contain yourself. Jesus is coming, and he's giving us a, a little bit of heaven on earth here this morning. Hi, oh, Lord. Let me get comfortable. Folks, try to be too dignified anymore. Just let me have church. If you shout till your hair comes down, praise God. Let's just have church. If you get a little wrinkled up, who cares? Let's just have church. I'm not worried about the outside of the cup. I'm not worried about the outside of the platter. Oh, praise God. I want to stir what's on the inside because it's what's on the inside that's going to carry you home. There's a project going on right now at work, and they've told us all that from now till, for from one day last week until the 20th of this month, everybody is on emergency standby, on call. I can get called at any time. And what's going on, one of the big water towers during an inspection, they found out, and this thing holds millions of gallons of water. They found out during an inspection. Now, on the outside of that water tower, it looks strong. Nicely painted. You wouldn't think anything was wrong with it. But on the inside, hear what I'm saying. On the inside of it, there's about a six-foot crack. Kind of, kind of, kind of, uh, kind of thick too. So what they're doing is they're going to drain this thing of its life-sustaining substance. I'm preaching to you. Of its life-sustaining substance in order to try to get in there and fix the thing. Now, what they're worried about is the, the man who's coming to do the work on it. He said he, one of the other jobs he was on, same thing, cracking from within. They, they drained it. He said what he was worried about and why everybody is on standby was this. When they drain it all out, they're worried about not exploding. Explode is from the outside. But they're worried about it imploding. What are you talking about, Pastor? On the inside. What's on the inside? Falling down and breaking and crumbling from the inside. Mm, I'm preaching to you. When they drain it of that life-sustaining fluid, that we call water. They're scared that it may collapse, my Lord, from the inside. And that's how it is with folks. The devil beats on them. He drains them. They don't come to church and get filled back up. Amen, Brother Mike? 
Say amen again. They don't have time in their house set aside for God. The battles keep coming. The devil starts beating. And all of a sudden, something begins to crack and shift inside. Remember, out of the heart. Jesus said in that last chapter that we read, the very first thing cleanse the inside. It's all to do with the inside. And he'll begin to beat, he'll begin to, to beat on you and bring things. And then he catches you not exactly walking the way you should be walking. And all of a sudden, a little chink, a little crack. Then it begins to grow. And it gets a little bit bigger. Before you know it, your speech starts defiling you. Out of the mouth proceed. Hear what I'm, out of the mouth proceeds. Then all of your life, listen, if you don't have him in here, you have no life. Absolute, you are as good as done. So what they're trying to do, drain this thing down. Hopefully they're, they're hoping it doesn't implode doesn't crumble from the inside so that they can get in there and they can fix that crack so they can fix that well. Hear what I'm saying? So they can fill it, refill it. <laughs> some of us are worn. Some of us are beaten. Some of us feel broken. Oh, hallelujah. But he said, come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He wants you to, to bring your broken pieces to him. Come on, I'm preaching to you this morning. He wants you to come to him with all of your hang-ups. He wants you to come to him with all of your problems. He wants you to come to him with all of your broken pieces. And I want you to know when you come to him with all of your broken pieces, you don't have to worry about the church world knowing what's going on in your life because he keeps it with him and I want you to know when you bring everything to him and you lay it down at the altar, when you lay it down at the foot of the cross he'll begin to take that which was broken and mold it in my Lord and my God how can you just sit there he's beginning to shape you again, he's not going to throw the clay away just because there's a little crack just because there's a little gap but he's going to pick it up, put it back on the potter's wheel, begin to mold it, begin to make it to what it should be. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, but he's still working on me. I feel like preaching this morning. My Lord, I feel like a madman possessed this morning. It's funny what the anointing will do to a person. But thank God for the precious anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank God for his keeping power. You know what? It does not have to get to the point to where you can openly see a crack or a gaping wound in your heart. It does not have to get to that point. You can't show me nowhere in the Bible where it tells you that you have to let it get to that. Amen, Brother Mike. But you know what? When I feel, and listen, preachers are not exempt from it. They go through a lot of things, a lot of hardships, a lot of battles. Half the battle is just getting ready and getting up here to do what God wants me to do. That's half the battle right there. Preparation, getting up here fighting every demonic thing that you can think of. 
And you know what? It beats on you. Trying to break that outward shell, you know what? This body, this body may bend, it may break. And it may, he may penetrate this outer shell. But this in here, I've got another power. And it's called the Holy Ghost power that Satan cannot penetrate. You hear what? Oh, hallelujah. I said, I've got another power, and he's called the Holy Ghost power. You can do what you want, devil. I want you to know something. If you're true, blood-washed and blood-bought, a child of God, you can line the battles up, and the child of God will take each and every one and pass each and every test and each and every battle because it's not me, but it's he who lives with inside of me. I said it's him who's going to bring me through. It's him that's going to take me over to the other side. Oh, hallelujah. Talking about the Holy Ghost power. And you know what? Not everybody, listen, however you can get through to God, however, everybody is not on the same uh, growth levels in God. There's babes in Christ, those those who are well and seasoned. Not everybody is on the same growth levels in Christ, but that's all right. And I've talked to folks and, well, Mike, I don't know how to do I don't know how to get through to God. I want to get in the flow. I want to, I want to get in his mindset. I want to get in that frame. I want to get in the spirit. You may not be a big eloquent prayer with, listen, that does not impress God. A prayer is a sincere desire of what? There it is again. (laughs) Now, if out of the heart can proceed murderers, evilness, hatefulness, fornication, and all these different things, then out of the the heart also, (laughs) there's a flip side to everything. Can come something so sincere. Oh, hallelujah. Listen to what I'm saying. Out of the heart can come something so sincere that it moves the hand of God. Mm. My Lord and my God. The one who has always been and who always will be. The eternal one. The I am that I am. (laughs) Jehovah God. I can go on and on. To have someone like that stand up at attention when you or you or me has a sincerity coming out of here, isn't that humbling? To just think, the creator of the ages can be moved by a sincere heart. My Lord and my God. And like I said, it doesn't take big words. I got thinking this morning, there was a story that came back to me, a song. Now, some of you in here who have been here a while will will recognize it. But there's others who will not recognize it. And it was a story. Bobby Grove used to used to sing it and tell it about a little boy named Jimmy. And let me go through this real quick. It's going to tie in well with what I just said. If all you know is calling on the name of the Lord, then that's all you know. As long as it comes from a sincere heart, it will move the hand of God. And the story picks up this little boy, I believe, they said he was about eight or nine years old, if I'm not mistaken. 
And he had a hard life. His mother and father did not want him. They lived a nightlife. Didn't care whether he ate. Didn't care where he slept. So he fended for himself. And this is a while back. He would take newspapers and he had a newspaper out and he'd sell newspapers just so he could eat and fill his belly. Imagine a young boy like that taking responsibility. And it says that he was passing a church one day and he could hear the preacher inside preaching about if you'll just come to this altar and kneel down and repent of your sins. A man named Jesus will come into your heart. There it is again. (laughs) And he'll save you. Well, that boy named Jimmy, really not knowing who Jesus was, probably had never heard of him before. But a pure heart like that, you give me a pure heart like that, and God will take somebody like that. Why do you think they have the miracles that they're seeing overseas? It's new to them. The gods that they tried have not worked, and they will not work. But when they are presented with a man named Jesus, they know there's something to it and they take it and they run with it. And it says that, he said, I'm going to go in. He said, I I have newspapers. He said, I'll give Jesus a newspaper. And he said, he, he went up to the front and he stood at the altar. And the only thing he knew how to say was Jesus This is Jimmy. However you can. Hear what I'm saying. However you can. It's the only thing that this little boy knew. And every day, it said he would pass by there. And he would go up to the altar, the same spot, and he would say the same words over and over. Jesus, this is Jimmy. Jesus, this is Jimmy. One day he went by and the pastor was inside having a meeting, the story says, with some of his board and some of the church members. And this little boy was not aware that he was going to interrupt anybody. This is where being long-suffering comes into play. You don't know what somebody is going through. Do not add sorrow upon sorrow. Do not add affliction upon affliction. Leave people alone. Don't judge them. Pray for them and let God work it out. Jimmy went in and he went to that same spot at the altar and he said, Jesus, this is Jimmy. Jesus, this is Jimmy. And he said the pastor got upset and he jumped up and he grabbed the boy by the arm and said, son, why do you keep coming in here with that foolish prayer every day? Jesus, don't you call something that somebody has on the inside. Don't you call some, the way somebody communicates with God. Listen, there are different manifestations, but it's all the same spirit. And he was slightly irritated. And the boy said, Pastor, he said, it's the only way that I know how to pray. It's the only thing that I know. So the little boy took his papers and walked outside not knowing that that was the last time that he'd ever say those words. And it says he stepped off of the curb out in the front of a big truck that was coming down that way, and it hit him. And the pastor was sitting at an angle to where he saw it happen and feeling bad with what he's done. Listen, folks, it's too late after you've already... Treat people with respect. Treat people with love while you've got them today. I hope this is sinking in. A church will never get anywhere divided. A house divided against itself will not stand because it's got a crack somewhere. And said that pastor ran out and he scooped that little boy up and he put him in his car and he took him to the hospital. 
There the little boy began to deteriorate. The pastor said to the doctor, he said, can we do anything? What can we do? The doctor told him there's nothing you can do. He said, this little boy will soon be gone. But you know what? All of your prayers, you may feel like, how many of you have been there where you felt like God wasn't hearing? Like God didn't care? In the end, we will see. In the end, you will know, and in the end, it will be revealed. Don't you ever let the devil or some self-righteous Christian come to you and say, this one will never come in, that one will never come in. You'll never get this prayer answered. Let God be true and every man a liar. And it said the pastor looking at that little boy laid there and his life was almost gone from this body. And he said all of a sudden, a great light lit up that hospital room. And he said it sounded like someone wanted to speak and it felt like someone made an entrance. God hears your prayers. He sees your tears. And he said, from that great light that was over top of that little lifeless boy, everybody in the room heard these words. Jimmy, this is Jesus. Mm, My Lord and my God. That just touches you right here. Jimmy, this is Jesus. (laughs) They didn't love you here on this earth. Your mother and father didn't care anything about you. Oh, but I want you to know, hallelujah, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. That little boy, his little lifeless body, nobody loved him, nobody cared for him. Oh, but Jesus looked down and he said, Son, I've heard your prayer. It may not have been big. It may not have been swelling words, but it was from the heart. I said it was from the heart. And Jesus took that little little boy in his arms and crossed over unto my Lord. He crossed over unto the other side safe in the arms of Jesus forevermore. Never to hurt. Never to be backbitten. Never to be stabbed. Never to be spat upon. Never to be looked upon and scorned and put out of the churches. These things ought not be. We need to let God be God and let him do what he wants to do and then you'll see God come. Then you'll see the glory fill the church once again. That's all that little boy knew. From within inside. That's why Jesus said cleanse first. The inside cleanse first. The very first thing make sure this is clean. Make sure this is right. The only way that little boy knew to communicate, listen, whatever way you can. Whatever way you got to communicate with God, that's how you do it because he sees and then he recognizes it. Stand with me this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and worship the Lord this morning. We communicate with him through praise and worship also. He's the healer. God inhabits praise. A broken heart. Hallelujah. Listen to this song. Heal men. Your shattered dream. He'll pick up the threads. Of your broken life And mend them together Again To your soul It'll bring peace and joy Hallelujah And a friend 
In need he'll always be. Always be. He's the healer of broken hearts. This Jesus of Calvary. Listen, I want some folks that are broken this morning. Now, a while ago, peace and joy. I asked how many folks were going through the extreme, going through the battles, and every hand went up. I want some folks that are broken this morning to get out of that seat and come around this altar. He's a healer. Don't go away with that gaping wound, that gash this morning, because it'll continue to grow, it'll continue to get bigger. Until it absolutely overtakes you and implodes from the inside. Anybody else before we pray? Don't stand there and hold that stuff in this morning. Come up here and let it go and let it out. Give it to God. Don't let the devil scare you into what's going to happen if I go up there. What's folks going to think? Who cares what people think? I'm worried about what the Lord thinks about me. Anybody else before we start praying? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Set your hands forth this towards the front and let's pray. He's a healer of broken hearts. He'll men your shattered dreams. He'll pick up the threads of your broken life. He'll mend them together again to your soul. He'll bring Peace and joy. A friend in need, he'll always be. He's a healer of broken hearts. This Jesus of Calvary. To your soul, he'll bring peace and joy. And a friend in need, he'll always be. He's the healer of broken hearts. This Jesus of Calvary
to your soul. He'll bring peace and joy. A friend in need, he'll always be. He's a healer, a broken heart. See what we got over here. This Jesus of Calvary. Stretch your hands this way. I'm going to pray for my wife's back. your soul you'll bring peace and joy and a friend in need he'll always be he's a healer a broken heart this Jesus of Calvary. Thank you, Lord. Lord's good to us, isn't he? Hallelujah. I have felt his presence. I've felt his touch this morning. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm tired now. <laughs> Man, I'll go back and watch this later. Man, what in the world got a hold of me? I know what it was. <laughs> you know, and in myself, I could never do it. In yourself, you could never do it. That's where he, where he comes into play at, and that's why he is who he is. And that's why we are who we are. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Don't forget your services tonight at 6 o'clock. Go home and pray for it, and we'll pray that the Lord's will be done. So let's bow our heads and dismiss. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful, Lord, for your presence and thankful for every good gift that you've given us. Lord, we're thankful for everyone that's come out to be in your house today. And we ask, God, that they take something, Lord, that's been said. We ask you to place it in their heart, God. Lord, and I ask you that you would go with them and that they would be able to bring forth an abundance of fruit for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Shake hands one with another, and we'll see you back here at 6 o'clock.